How you feeling? Chen, how are you? Chen, just uh, did something with the YBN kids all day. Oh, uh, yeah. Little fucking rugrats. <laughs> Showing no time. Yeah, they're crazy. It reminded me of hanging out with my fucking five year old nephews a little bit. Mostly Jay. He's like the really like irresponsible, crazy one. <laughs> yeah. Man, they got a weird ass dynamic too, because Corday is like the nerd and they just pick on him for it and just like give him a hard time. And it reminds me, it's, it reminds me of being 18, how you just mess with people so much when you're that age. <laughs> I don't know. Like, I don't know. You ever think about that? When you look back at like how you were when you were super young, and it's just crazy as fuck to think about like just B- bad the, as you. just the wild shit that you did without thinking about it. Just like picking on your friends so hard. We were we were bad with that, you know. Just like making fun of your friends till they're fucking borderline have like a personality crisis. So, <laughs> so uh, how, how long you been out here in LA? Two days. Two days. Just doing media run for the new project. Yeah, just going around, just um. Basically, just promote the album. Yeah. How's it going? Good. You doing any notable interviews already on the cycle? Um, actually, we, I don't like putting no limit to none. Like, if I'm finna drop an album, I don't like putting no limit. I like to go to everything. Right. Hell yeah. So what makes uh, this this project, like, what, what was the idea that kind of separates it from stuff you've done in the past? Because I was definitely uh, listening to the T. Grizzly tape that you did, like, a hundred times. So it was, it was interesting to see you sort of come back around and do a, another, like, project in your own signature style. Um, basically, just getting back to the basics. You know what I'm saying? Getting back to what I know, getting back to the fundamentals. You know what I'm saying? To what the fans like and want. You know what I'm saying? Um, being signed in Delta since 2012. You know what I'm saying? A couple of months ago, mm-hmm. um, I wouldn't be able to, I wouldn't be able to um, being creative. Couldn't drop what I wanted to. Had to ask, can I drop? You know what I'm saying? And it was just like, go do whatever. So I kept myself afloat. But now it's like, it's, it's turned. It's over with. Right. So when you look back at that, do you think that overall the Def Jam, like the decision to rock with Def Jam early on in your career was a bad idea? Oh, um, no. You know what I'm saying? It's just... It just ain't the right situation for me. Right. It might fit the next person, but just, you know what I'm saying, it ain't fit me. Do you feel like that they were trying to turn you into too much of a star? Trying um, to force you into that, like, pop star bubble or something? Sure. That's what I wanted to say. Like, they wanted me to go pop. Then when I had something, I'm like, I'm going to do this. They're like, nah. But it's like I had no say-so, so it was like. Right. You know what I'm saying? It was just a bad situation for me. Yeah, because, like, the Jeremiah song and stuff, like, when I think about it, those are, like, the big moments that I kind of remember, if, like, from your career that really made me be like, damn, this dude is fucking dope. Like, this, like those songs really do stand out, but then at the same time, I, saw, I always, like, wondered, like, is the label kind of pressuring him to make a certain type of record because it seemed like they had sort of a formula with putting R&B singers on your shit and everything? Yeah. Yeah, they, 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 was, they was behind it. I'm saying? I got plats from it, you know what I'm saying? But now I'm going to give y'all, like, all me. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like, um... Just because y'all waited, we dropped it. You right. know what I'm saying? Just out the blue. And it was on the Apple charts. Top 10 for like, what happened, like six weeks. You know what I'm saying? That's just off, off me. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Now it's like, it's like whatever now. It's turned. Back in the zone. Yeah, because I mean, shit in the whole music <laughs> industry has changed a lot where it's like a lot of the biggest songs that we could look at over the past couple of years really don't sound like, you know, it don't sound like they tried to make radio records, you know? Yeah. And you have Pump going crazy, you have Gucci Gang, and that don't sound like anything. Like, he tried to make a hit. <clears throat> yeah, you got to give it to him. Yeah. But anybody, I mean, any, anybody who turned up right now and everybody who hot, you got to give it to him because they change. They, like, everything changed. Yeah. So, like, the older people be like, man, that's not real. Like, it don't even matter. Like, your opinion don't even count. Right. Do you feel like you get the credit you deserve for being like sort of an innovator in the, in terms of being willing to like sing to use auto tune and stuff like that? Because you have somebody like Juice World who gets crazy credit for doing that from like a Chicago kid perspective. But in a way, you could see how there's like an influence or at least like a, a stylistic connection there. Yeah, shout out Juice World. I'm saying my boy, but yeah, it's um, cause it's it's probably just the way we came out the gate, the mm-hmm. whole 300 wave, recipes Fredo too. It's nice. probably just the, the whole 300 wave I came out the gate. It was like hardcore, drill. And I'm like the one that's using the tune, like melodizing. So they just like, man, stop that. Uh, that. <laughs> and it's like, fuck no, I ain't going to never stop that shit. Right. So from, from your perspective, like, because I always wondered, because like there was like that Chief Key GBE explosion. And then there was like, you know, a few artists that we just found out about afterwards that came out of Chicago. And I feel like, you know, you, Herbo, Bibby, that that was sort of like the next generation of dudes that sort of like sprung out from from that. Would you say that's accurate? Because I'm interested in like what your perspective on 
what your perspective was just like watching the the Keith explosion as a, as a kid. Yeah, accurate. I'm saying everybody you name, you know what I'm saying plus more plus Fredos and Reese's. Right. Yeah. Um, it's pretty accurate. You know what I'm saying it's everybody who right now who just still doing their thing. Turn everybody you just name. You feel me? Mm-hmm. So it's like the the whole thing when like back then when it first started, you never knew like who was gonna blow. Right. It was just like, are you from Chicago? Oh, he a star. Like that's how they, <laughs> like, that's how they was just looking at it. So. Yeah, there was a weird moment where it's like the whole thing got set off so crazy that it was like you felt like you were a part of like a gold rush where the industry was really just trying to capitalize on all the young Chicago rappers. Say it, say it again. It was like a gold rush in the sense like that the whole industry just saw all these young fucked up kids from Chicago <laughs> rapping about all this crazy ass shit and they just smelled blood. They smelled money and they were just like. I was we, one of them. We got to get them. Yeah, I know. You were one of those those kids that like kind of got smelled wrapped that. up in it. <laughs> Smelled that money, I was gone. <laughs> yeah, man. But so what was your perspective? Like, because we, were you, like, really taking your rap career seriously once, you went, like, at the time that you saw Keith popping up on a crazy level? No. You weren't? No, because it was just, like, I don't know, like, back then it was, like, more fun. Mm. So it was just, like, shit, we catch, we catch, we got these shows together. We all family, we all brothers. Like, this what it is. But in actuality, it's, at the end of the day, it's like, all right, cool. Now you got to start getting on your shit. You right. want to be at the top. So was it like motivation once you saw other people start uh, blowing up and you realized like, <laughs> damn, I could I could take this shit a lot more serious too? You talk back then or now? Yeah, back then. Um, yeah, of course. Yeah. Like, I used to pay attention to everything. Like, I used to sit at TV and watch TV and be like, damn, I ain't going to never be like this. <laughs> like, I was like, I ain't going to never be rich like this. And had a lot of doubt, you know what I'm saying, how I was coming up, you know what I'm saying, how I was raised. Like, my mom ain't do no bad job. It's just the environment we was in. Right. Just had it like I'm like we ain't gonna never be nothing. Like, right. That's the mass that I had. So when did you feel like you really started to get that motivation? Like, what what was it that like the that, and what did it feel like at that time? Um, when I had my first son. What, okay. Yeah, Angelo. I had my first son. Um, when I was in jail, he was born. Oh, okay. So what were you locked up for that time? I had a gun case. Okay. <laughs> so you had like a hundred gun cases, right? <laughs> nah. <laughs> Not a hundred, but like a few. Innocent until you proven guilty. Right. So it don't matter. <laughs> no, nah, but um, it was so crazy because he was born while I was locked up. Mm-hmm. Like one day he wasn't born, I woke up the next day he was born. So I just wanted to change the whole thing for him. Right. You know what I'm saying? And be different for him. I didn't want to grow up. Had him growing up, me being in jail a lot, not being successful. Mm. I don't want to be one of them stories that be like, oh yeah, Dirk, he used to be, de- be with them, but yeah, he f- fell off. Nah. Because there's always a lot of those in rap. Yeah, like, because what people don't know is like, once you rap, you got to invest. Mm. You know what I'm saying? And you got to invest to well as when rap stop, you will still be rich as hell. Right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, that's like the goal. And and I've heard you talk about that when I was listening to your Vlad interview and you were saying that like, uh, what do you do? You do, uh, you have like a, a real estate company and yeah. like some kind of trucking company. Yep. So how does that, uh, like when did you decide to get into all that? Um, my brother D-Thing just, well basically my whole team, you know what I'm saying? But the trucking came first my, from my brother D-Thing. And, um, he was just breaking it down to me, like, just say at the time we was getting 3000 a show. Mm-hmm. And by me being young and being expired and never having nothing, I go spend a whole 3000 on clothes. Right. Then be coming to him, like, I need some money. You know what I'm <laughs> but he just broke it down to me, like, you can you can make it where you can spend 50000 on clothes or whatever you want to buy. Right. And don't think about it. You know what I'm saying? From that point on, it's just like, got to say, you know what I'm saying? Right, yeah, because that's the like best case scenario is that, like, you, a young man who doesn't necessarily know a lot about business, who doesn't, didn't go to college, is able to, like, get in the rap game. We all know that, like, a rap career is usually not a long career, but at least be able to take that money you get and be able to, like, start something in your community or for your family or whatever. Like, even if you're, if a, a dude's rap career doesn't go that far, it's like that still is, like, best case scenario that they can at least have something to show from it. Yeah, definitely. You definitely got to have something to show for it. Like, some people just be out here just... Spending money, ain't got no house. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Ain't got no car. Like, you got to have something to show for it. Yeah, it's funny, too, because it's like, dude, <laughs> dudes will get their first check, and then they, like, see how all the rappers live, and they just want to live like that, even if it means they got absolutely nothing left after that. I ain't going to, um, you can't discredit them, though. Right. That was one of them. <laughs> yeah, so totally. I was, I was fresh out of jail. Uh-huh. First day I came home, I went to the Louis store. Right. I'm like, I always wanted the Louis belt. <laughs> <laughs> I went to the store, got the Louis belts, and... You know what I'm saying? We're just blowing through it. Right. Uh, that's when I make the right here video. 
Mm-hmm. I had the, the two new Gucci belts on my neck. I said, yeah, you lit. <laughs> That's fire. Now, I mean, because you do, you sympathize with that outlook, though, because I know a lot of dudes who, like, they still, like, just spend so much money on clothes, like, older dudes and shit. But, like, at the end of the day, I understand where they're coming from because people wouldn't really give them credit for having money or being about their business unless they literally just proved it by, like, wearing expensive-ass clothes. And, like... It ain't even about that. It ain't always about expensive clothes. Like, some people ain't into clothes, like, chance. He's not into clothes, you know what I'm saying? But he got so much clout, he don't need no clothes. Exactly. So <laughs> you need to get to where, to a point that you don't right. try to make people like you, you feel me? That's tough, though. That's all. I, that's honestly how <laughs> I always felt my whole life. It was like, fuck all that like fashion shit or having a fancy car or whatever. I'm just going to work so hard that eventually at some point like my accomplishments will like make it so that all that shit is irrelevant it's different strokes for different folks yeah yeah no i tried it all out like i, I bought all the design <laughs> i bought designer shit tried it out but i just ended up you, feeling like that ain't really you me you can't you can't be swagged out then turn around and try to be basic they gonna be like oh, yeah he, he ran out of money no for real that is what it is yeah, too yeah, yeah. look at it like that my girl bought me a chain too for my birthday i'm like <laughs> looking at it like i don't know babe this just doesn't feel i don't know <laughs> i just don't feel like it's me i don't know it's like a weird because that's the whole thing is you got to make decisions like you could afford- I, used to, I used to be like that like i used to be i used to be quiet mm. i'm saying i will not even say shit i just i wasn't no people person right like um when i used to deal with french it used to be like he was like go over there holler at drake mm. or he was like go over there holler at ross like these are the people you need to build your own relationship with they right you my family and i used to be just in the corner just quiet like he was like play your music and i'm like <laughs> and he got the email. Like, what do you think it was? You think it was that you were young? Um, on, 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 I ain't gonna say young. It was just I used to always see myself around the bigger artists and be like, I don't know. I used to get like shook. Like, I mean, talking to Drake, so that's a big thing to just walk on up and be like, "Yo, you might not know about me, but I swear yeah, to God, like, I'm dope." Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the story of the life, story of life. Right. I'm dope, but at the same time, like you know I'm saying, French definitely set that platform up for me to even. Um, be in the situation I am today. Right. I mean, French, like, I heard a lot of people say, and it really makes sense, he's kind of like the master networker. Like, he will just, he's made so much out of his connections in you his gotta, career. You gotta, you gotta give it to French. Yeah. And you gotta give it to Rich the Kid. Rich the Kid, too, is another master finesser. Yep. You fuck around to see him around Jesus. You like, damn, that motherfucker <laughs> know everybody. <laughs> <laughs> Certain types of people could just it just it just makes sense to him. So did, is that kind of like a regret in your career that the thing with French didn't work out? Do you look at that and sort of feel like that that was a pivotal moment? Hell no. No? No. You're glad that it didn't work out? No, I'm glad that I'm glad everything went how it went. Bro, okay. You know what I'm saying? Because I wouldn't be right here. Right. Like, being around him, I walk into his house, he, he got a uh, Louis Vuitton carpet. I say, shit, I, I, did, I barely got the belt. You got a fucking <laughs> carpet, you feel me? But he was just like, he was just motivation to me, you know what I'm saying? Still is. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because that's like, you know, it's kind of, the label thing's always going to be a tricky thing. I'm hyped that you have a situation that you're actually, like, confident, though, right now, because you were miserable with the fucking Def Jam thing for a long time, huh? Shout out Alamo and the scope. Okay, so it's public. It's, yeah, it's push. It's a push. It's a go. I'm saying priority. You know what I'm saying? Like, I be looking at my numbers and my streamers, like, damn, like, it's turned. It's over with. You know what I'm saying? That's the best thing I did was got away from Delta. Yeah, I feel that. So, like, in terms of, like, features that you did on this one, like, who, who'd you get in there with that you, that you were, like, actually hyped to, to work with? Um, I'm going to say different for me and, like, that I wanted to do it with. I'm going to say Juice World. Juice World. So that is on the new project? Yeah. Fuck, I only made it like fucking 10 songs in. I must have missed that one. <laughs> That's crazy, though. That, that was when I was talking about that connection earlier. I should have mentioned that. So, like, what was that like? You guys yeah. actually get in the studio together? Yeah. We definitely got, we got like seven songs just off the first studio. Session. For real? Yeah, Lil Baby, another one. Oh, Lil Baby, too, is, yeah. is going crazy right now. Definitely. He's like the new fucking feature god of uh, the scene. So, wait, what was the energy like with you and Juice World? Turn. Turn. I can like, only imagine. Yeah, because it's like, I've been waiting on your ass. Come on. Right. I'm saying we got a lot of shit though. Like it's just about working and vibing and and networking. Like I'm, we well, all of us trying to get to where it's Chicago, just trying to help each other stay afloat. Like how Atlanta do it. Like everybody work with everybody, and you know what I'm saying keep up with each other. Like that's how we just try to do. Like I bet if, if you, you, you if you lose one view, I'm gonna help you get that motherfucker back. Like 
Yeah. That's how we trying to do. Do you feel like, are you the kind of person that has that crazy fast work ethic? Because Juice World in the studio is like a fucking animal, man. He just, sure. just goes crazy. You can sure. keep up with that like, pace? Definitely. Off the of perks? I, I, I got, like, uh, you, you got, guys off the perks in there? No, I don't fuck with perks. <laughs> You're over that? No, I'm, I'm done with the motherfuckers. Oh, okay. But it's just like, I'm so, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't got in my bag so much and, and know what I want. It's like, I know what they want to hear. Mm -hmm. It's easy. I can, I can go in there talk about some foreign. No, I'm going to talk about forms. I'm going to talk about the trenches. I'm going to talk about the bitches, the jury. When the motherfucker got shot, jail. I'm going to talk about everything. Cause this is the shit I've been wanting to talk about, but I couldn't really have it at the same time because the Dev Jam situation, they'd be like, no, nah, don't drop that Monday. Really? Then the fans would be like, damn, you said you was... I'm like, couldn't but, really say the situation. But were they like involved like creatively? Like They didn't want you talking about super gangster shit on a record too? or No, it was just like, um, just say, I'm going to give you an example. Just say it was the first time me doing Make It Out and, and taking them um, Molly World I did, mm -hmm. uh, Future and Wiz, they'll be like, I don't do Make It Out. I mean, they, I mean, this ain't what you want. They'll be like, go ahead with the Molly World record. And I'd be like, man, they want to hear this. And it was just it was just all fucked up. And I, and they told me what to do so long, like which music to choose so long that I, I faked adapted to it. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Lost myself, like. Ain't know what I wanted. But you feel so powerless that you just sort of like give in, like, all right, I'll just let you do whatever. But you, then you can say, fuck y'all. I'm gonna guess where you going. Right. It was going on that shelf. You can't do nothing about it. Or you could just sort of give in and just let them put out some records that you're not 100% excited but about, you huh? Think about it. It's 2018. Yeah. Like, how long you think that shit gonna work? Right. It's somebody new every day. Yeah. It's crazy these days. Was it hard to get out of your deal or were they pretty like chill about it? You know what's so crazy? Now, this shit ain't gonna work for everybody. <laughs> All I did was ask. Really? All I did was ask. I'm like, man, you know, we just broke down the situation. Like, I'm straight. I don't want to. They agreed. I'm like, yes. Right. Because, I mean, at the end of the day, when a label's stuck with a, like, if they don't really want to work with you, it's like you don't have that much to offer them, you know? So it's like, if, if, it's, a, if it's a mutual decision, shit. There wasn't any money exchange in hands after the fact or anything? I'm sure there was all kinds of technical stuff, huh? No. I don't know if we can talk about it. <laughs> um, yeah. But yeah, though, Science Street 3 movie facts like i just know like when this shit drop it's just gonna be like it's just gonna be different like i'm gonna tell everybody to grab that surfboard because the wave is gonna be crazy <laughs> yeah. that's amazing uh so when you look back on it how much did the double xl cover mean a lot like some people don't care i care about that type of shit because at the end of the day that's like that's something i want to do right like, to see that shit and be like i gotta get on the cover right so i'm a, another motherfucker probably be like i'm straight i don't care about it that's just you. You know what I'm saying? Like, Yeah, I think it's valuable. You got to think about it. If somebody's not a fan of you, but they're a fan. I mean, if nobody don't know you, somebody don't know you, then they're a fan of Double XL. Right. They'll see the cover and then look into you. Mm -hmm. Become one of your biggest fans. You know what I'm saying? You got to do all ways to grow fans. Yeah. Like, if you drop a tape, you got to do, do something way big and different for your next tape to grow fans. Yeah. Because, I mean, that's the one thing about the Double XL thing is it's hard to get a lot. It's, most people, it's hard to get them to check your shit out in the first place. So it's like that's just that one thing that it offers you is that everybody's going to at least check out a song or two just to see if they fuck with you, you know? And that's like the biggest, that's the hardest thing to get through as a rapper is just getting people to check your shit out for to the notice, first time. To notice. Yeah, just to notice and even give it a shot. You know, you ain't got to do nothing today. It's the internet, social media, Instagram. You can make a 15 second clip and have the whole world going crazy. Yeah. Instead of standing outside, like, huh, you will see. Like, they don't really care about that. Like, nobody listens to CDs no more. Right. Does, who, just, who, just set the, who just set the album um, from selling albums in the store? Who was that? Oh, was uh, it Travis Buy? Scott? No, was it Best Buy? They st somebody oh, they stopped, stopped selling, selling CDs, yeah. Exactly. Like, they don't care about CDs. They care about streamers, they care about iPhones. They care about the Apple Music, Spotify, my mixtapes, whatever it is, any uh, music album, that's what they care about. They don't care about no CDs. Yeah. But it's interesting for someone like you, though, because I've always seen you as being very, like, album-oriented, but you also have, have, like, an insane number of, like, really high-quality videos with a like, shitload of views all over YouTube and shit, too. Mm -hmm. you always, like, really been focused on, like, those single pro single songs as well as, like, the total project. Uh, now or back then? I don't know. Is it true or false? It feels like you always were consistent with the videos and stuff, but then at the same time, like, the album is, like, the past... I don't know. I feel like you've been pretty consistent in terms of just putting out, like, full bodies of work, but I don't know how happy you were with them early on. Um, I started being happy. Sound Streets 1, Sound Streets 2. And just because y'all waited. Right. 
Like everything else in between was like, huh? I just want, I'm trying to stay afloat. I ain't trying to die out. I'm trying to keep up. Like, um, I don't know. I just feel like this is the perfect time. It's like cause everything's still the same. You know what I'm saying nothing changed. You know what I'm saying I still get the same love. Shows still be turned sold out. So it just be like, I don't know. I'm just in mode. Yeah. I'm, I'm just in beast mode. Facts. Um, how do you feel about, like, I mean, that's one thing that's been really good to see, like, the unity in Chicago for the most part in terms of, like, certain other rappers sort of dissing Chicago as a whole. How do you feel about that? We got people dissing Chicago. Yeah. This guy's 6'9". He's been had some things to say, so it's, like, been interesting because it feels like everybody in Chicago sort of felt, like, offended all together. Um, yeah, like, he disrespect a lot of cities, you know what I'm saying, and people go handle how they handle it. Mm-hmm. But the situation with them is just, like, the shit with um, Keith and 6 9 was just, like, when I hopped on the phone, I, you know, I don't, I don't really pay attention to that shit, like, all oh, that suck my dick. I don't pay attention to none of that shit, so when he hopped on the phone, I was really lost. Mm-hmm. I'm like, wait. <laughs> and then why he called me, like, man, no, he, I'm saying, that's when he called, like, no, I apologize, I ain't mean, like, that's little shit. Right. We just had motherfuckers, 58 motherfuckers get shot over the weekend in Chicago. Right. So I don't really give a fuck about nothing. Like Do you feel like you were, like, duped into sort of co-signing something that you wouldn't normally want to be a part of? It's not really co-signing. Okay. I'm saying co-signing is, man, stop that shit, get off that, you cool, or fuck him up. Like, right. That's co-signing, like, I don't really give a fuck about it, really. For sure. Uh, well, do you feel like... Uh do you feel like these days, like your whole attitude has changed so much? Like, would you be, th- would you be like happy to entertain that beef at an early, earlier point in your career? And do you feel like you're just like at a happier nah, point in your that, life now? That, that shit, like, that shit, funny games. Like all that shit, funny games. Like, it's 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 different. It's di- uh, difficult to explain it. Like, oh, this happened, this happened. But like, you not like nobody really not going to touch Keith. Like. Nobody really not gonna touch Reese because we'll still die, die about each other. You mm-hmm. feel me? It's, it's just crazy because it's just like everybody in they on their own shit. Like far as trying to get like to where they going or they comfortable with where they at. But like when you bring harm, like for real harm, you know what I'm saying? That's when like shit get for real. Like still die about each other. For sure. How do you feel when you see like these crazy ass statistics coming out about Chicago and shit? Like, 50, like you said, fifty eight murders in the past, uh, or fifty eight people shot, I think, over the weekend or something. Shit, been going on. Can you scoot in just a little bit? I just realized you're slightly off camera. Sorry. You this shit know. been going on. Yeah. Like, this shit ain't nothing new. Like, we had interviews back then about the uh, shootings and murders that went on at the time. So it's just like, actually, fifty eight is great compared to. They used to be 200, 200 and shit, 300 and shit. So 58, like, all right, it got better. Like, it was one time, it was like a couple of weeks ago where um, the trauma unit stopped accepting patients. Just because so it was that crazy? It was just like the doctors, everybody was busy. So, like, motherfuckers was just shot, families crying all outside. The, it was just, like, crazy, crazy. Like, now, that's one thing I ain't experienced. Right. Like, that's something i never seen. Like, that shit seemed unbelievable. Damn. So are you are you like happy with like sort of having some distance between you and that sort of situation? Like or or does it feel like almost like ain't you no, should be there? Ain't nowhere safe. Right. Oh the fuck if you move to Korea, like, ain't nowhere safe. Like that's what just going on, like because a lot the murder shit going on in Chicago. That's just what the story covered. That's what the news cover. Mm. You can go to Houston, the same shit happened, they just ain't putting it on the news, you know what I'm saying? Everywhere dangerous. When, it, but, but when you're out in Atlanta and stuff, or like when a lot of people move to LA, it seems like they feel like this is like a place where they can sort of escape from the crazy ass violence from where they grew up. Even though obviously wild ass shit happens out here, but it's kind of easier if you go move to the valley and you can kind of stay away from all the wild shit. You can move, you can move in a good part of Chicago and stay out the wild shit. Like, yeah, true. You can never compare like cities. That's one thing I hate when I used to see people bump to people. They'd be like, "My city do this." And my, I don't give a fuck about that. You know what I'm saying all I know is you could die anywhere, it's shooting anywhere, stabbing anywhere. It's the same shit. For sure. And it's weird when people say that just because, like, 
It's like you're you're trying to take credit for what everyone in your entire city has and done. You ain't be a fucking crumb. <laughs> yeah, a lot you of the fucking house. Sometimes your city do this. If you had actually shot some people, you probably wouldn't be like bragging about the overall yeah. Chicago murder rate when you're trying to like, make your well, case. Man, if you really shot somebody, and kill somebody, you ain't finna be talking about this shit in interviews and yeah, the fuck. Or acting like it's sexy or like it's cool, right? Yeah, because that's that's like the weird thing about sort of. That's how you send yourself to jail, man. That's how niggas going to jail on Instagram. That's a fact. We see that happen nonstop. We just did this. We we do it. Oh, it's dumb. Right. Police ain't even got to do nothing. They just sit on Instagram and just watch you. The game has definitely changed. Definitely. You guys feel like you were sort of early on that wave of uh, incriminating yourselves with guns and videos that when you look back at it? I feel like it's just, Chicago brought that back. It had been gone for a while from rap music. <clears throat> I just think, like, I think it's just a difference. I just think it's just two type of culture of rapping like it could be I ain't gonna say nobody names or number like it could be somebody rapping that's not on that type of street shit level and they could have four or five guns in the video and it'd be like damn y'all seen that but if I go do it I gotta have a fucking bullet in the video they're gonna be like oh he come on violent yeah like so it's a, it's a different type of era like this so. yeah it's crazy how they, they judge everybody by different standards like they take it real seriously when it comes from you or like they would use that as evidence to like shut your shows down and shit too right yeah because it's like that's what was really going on at the time that's when we were talking about a few rounds of number nine too yeah how's that, that, when i asked for questions for you everybody wants to know the status of, of where he's at how his appeals doing all that shit Appeal, appeals going great great really like great great like um talk to a man today you know what i'm saying he just Bright, I brighten up his day every time I talk to him because it's always something new. Right. Wow. Always something new. Lawyer straight. Like, when, that's why I just be seeing people, they be like, why you ain't buying them out? Why, go go get him. You can't go get him. <laughs> he already got convicted. <laughs> right. You know what I'm saying? But he definitely going to be home real soon. Damn, that's crazy. That would be like a real, like, holiday type vibe for you guys if, Man, if, if you're able to do if, that, huh? If I don't do nothing, I'm making him a young uh, NBA young boy do a mistake. Wow. For sure. I'm going to stand on top of that. Damn, that's crazy. That's somebody you're a huge fan of right now? A young boy? Yeah. Yeah, I fuck with him. He got that soul, that passion in his voice, fuck huh? Him, fuck with him. Like, 100%. Like, hard, hard. For sure, like, yeah. He, one of my, he, he my top five, for sure. Yeah. Who else is in there? Um, in terms of dudes who are really just killing it right now? <laughs> um, Definitely, like, a little baby. Um, Gunner. Future. Thug. Um, young boy. Um, you got. I ain't gonna lie. You, you nowadays you can't even say top five. You gotta say like top so many, twenty. Yeah, it's tough, huh? You know what I'm saying because I ain't gonna lie. Like I fuck with loose guys hard. Really? That's super dope. Actually, people I, were asking about that. They were like, I want to know his opinion about people like Juice and Little Skies. Yeah, ain't no difference. Like, right. that's people gotta understand. Like, like I just sent him three songs. He just sent me three songs. Like, wow. Like it's all about working. It's all about sharing, fan. Like that's what I mean. Like next level when you drop a tape, it gotta be different from last. You know what I'm right. saying. They got the waves, like they turn. Damn, that's dope to hear you say that. It's like yeah. just cool to see people like appreciating, you know, dudes that are doing a, something I a little different. I fuck with Lil Pump. I fuck with Trippy Red. I yeah. fuck with him. That's what's up. What about your girl Nikki? She she been having a weird weekend. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> no, I, I, I don't know. I fuck with her. It's just everybody got their own opinion, bro. Like I I can't come in here and be like, fuck her. She hate don't Travis. I can't say no shit like that because mm-hmm. I fuck with her. Right. You know what I'm saying, and that just be me being a follower, like. We just DM each other about a song. Really? And for me to be like, fuck it. Nah. Nah. I fuck with 100%. Right. I fuck with Travis. Yeah. It's just I, sort of I weird to it. watch all that like, taking it, place this weekend, huh? I stay out of certain shit. Right. I stay out of it. It feels good to be able to stay out of stuff. For sure. <laughs> <laughs> That's the best thing, the best feeling when you see people that you're like kind of close to when they're arguing or going crazy on the internet and you're just like, yeah. glad to name me. Uzi, another motherfucker I fuck with. Uzi's crazy. Yeah, definitely. Easy. That's an easy one to agree on. Just that he's like one of the most creative dudes out there right now. Um, yeah. So, shit. I don't know. What else is important that we talk about? I, I listened. To, yo, I listened to the new album a couple times today. But man, we really played out that Grizzly mixtape that you did. Oh yeah, shout out to Grizzly, my motherfucking brother. Yeah. <laughs> How'd you guys uh, become good friends? Are you still you still talk all the time? Um yeah. Um, my artist is named um Six Hundred Book. Right. Um. You know what I'm saying? They built they, they had their bond first. Right. You know what I'm saying? And he was just telling me, like, man, this nigga lawyer, he'll hunt it. He, I first met him. He had like two, three hundred thousand on him. All his jewelry. Right. I heard you telling that story. Yeah. yeah. He really had two hundred cash on him. So I'm looking like this nigga crazy. Then bro was just vouching, like, man, he hunted. He woo. I'm like, okay. 
And we just bonded from there. It just went crazy from there. Yeah, we working on Blood's Tooth. Damn, I was trying to get the fucking uh, screenshots of these fucking questions that the fans asked. Oh, there it is. Um, oh, yeah, the, the question. Oh, yeah, one girl was asking, does he want to be my sugar daddy? You into that? I'm not giving more for no cash. <laughs> Your name not Andy. I'm not giving you no cash. You hear me? <laughs> yeah, say my kids it's a rap. <laughs> yeah, I just thought that was a good question. Yeah, it's like important to figure that out, I guess. Damn, this fucking girl wants to face me 500 times in a row. What the fuck is going on? <laughs> um, shit. All right. So yeah, you're excited for the project. Shit's been going crazy. Anything else we should know about in terms of what's going on in your life? Um, um, let me see. I ain't gonna lie. I'm signing street street mode. <laughs> I'm just signing street street. Fire. Because I know when I drop, it's a wrap. I know it's a wrap. We're ready. I'm ready. Yo, I appreciate you coming through, man. I love. I'm looking forward to the seeing the reaction that the people got for the project and everything. And uh, yeah, thanks for holding it down. Appreciate it. Appreciate you, bro. Thank you, man.